Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Picket Fence Studios. Today we are going to be using this super cute 1970s coffee cup and the Hello There die. We're making three different cards today and we're going to be stretching this die in a different way to get a totally different look. Here's the color palette, which I'm totally loving. Um, not my usual go-to, but I think it came out super, super pretty. I was trying to go for those kind of like vintage modern vibes. And what I'm doing here is this is just a scrap piece of vellum that I have, and I'm going to cut my die out of this. You'll notice that the handle of the coffee cup is hanging off. It's because I don't need it. I only need that middle section with those really pretty florals. And the reason that I chose vellum, you can use acetate as well, but I needed something that was going to be durable because I'm using it multiple times that was going to be see-through so I could see where my placement was going to be and something that my cardstock wasn't going to stick to and peel apart the layers. So that's how I came up with the vellum because honestly, that's what I had laying on. <laughs> that's what I had laying on my desk. I took it out of my scrap pile. So for this, what I'm doing here, I needed to figure out how many I wanted to cut. And rather than guess, um, because I'm not a big fan of die cutting, so I don't like to be in the middle of the project and then find out that I'm missing one leaf that I need one more of. So I just want to do all of it in the beginning and, and get it done. So what I'm doing is I just have a scrap piece of paper and it's cut to an A2 size since that's what my card size is going to be. And I'm going in and I'm just tracing gen the general shapes of where I want my things to be. One of the cards that I'm going to be making is a full background. This will have the most florals, leaves, all of that on there. And so by doing this and laying it out and seeing how everything is going to fit, this is going to help me two ways. It's going to help me know how many dies to cut before I start. And then it's also going to help me when I'm putting together that specific card to see how my placement needs to go so that there's nothing laying on top of one another without having to move around my little die cut pieces a hundred times <laughs> because I don't enjoy that portion of the making either. So basically, I'm just going to move this around the card until I am happy. I ended up needing six of the florals. I am working with a lot of colors. And so what I chose to do was I cut it out of each color three times. So that would give me enough flowers. It actually gave me more than enough, to be honest. Um, that gave me enough flowers and enough leaves, enough stems to be able to create the three cards. I still, you guys know, if you uh, have watched my videos before, I keep my extra, well, I keep all of my die cuts as I'm cutting them in like a little cup on my desk. I still have so many more die cuts that I could make uh, more cards out of. Um, but honestly, I felt like three, I felt like three was enough. And, um, then I'll just put these back in the, uh, the, the cellophane, the holder, like the pocket that I keep the die in. Um, so that way that they'll be there the next time I want to use it. So that's what I'm doing here. Now you can cut this out. And I ended up doing that. I, here you can see I'm letting it kind of hang off because I know I only need the leaves and the green. So I'm letting that portion hang off. That is not how I ended up cutting them. I mean, to be honest with you, I ended up cutting three full pieces out of each one. And then um, that way I knew that I was going to have enough. It was also the easiest way to get it through my platinum six, through my die cutting machine. Here's another thing that I learned along the way. I'm always happy to share my little tips and tricks as I learn them with you. With this one, so this is the cup that I have. I put all of the die cuts in there. Originally, I was just going to leave them in the cup and then just kind of pick through what I wanted. That's what you see me doing here. I'm just kind of laying everything out inside my little vellum uh, floral. For these little like stamen that were coming off of the flowers, I wanted them to be different colors. I wanted to be able to use them as different colors. So I just went in and trimmed them off. I trimmed them the same way every time. Um, so that way all of them matched up. I just cut right along the top of the floral. So everything matched up. Second thing that I learned as I was doing this, 
I started with my crystal katana, which is typically used for like rhinestones and sequins and things like that. I ended up switching over to my tweezers. I found my tweezers to be much easier to work with and much more um, efficient. Like they, I, they just worked every time that I needed them to work. The next thing that I learned was when I originally did this, I was putting the glue on the cardstock and then feeding my die cut. Basically, we're just doing a bunch of inlay die cutting. Okay, that's that's what you're seeing here. And then I would inlay that die cut. What I found worked better was to put the glue on the die cut and then put it onto the cardstock. Um, that's just what seemed to, it was easier that way. Um, to kind of fit them in and get them to stay. Whereas when I was putting it on the the cardstock, there was a fear that it was kind of going to smush out into the vellum. Now, your vellum is not fallible. It like is not infallible is what I should say. Like it can fall apart. Here is what I ended up doing instead of having everything um, just outside of the cup. I ended up separating all of the elements into their own piles. And then I did all of the trimming of this, like this floral. I did all of that trimming there that I wanted for the stamen to be separate because then they were done and I had those pieces and they were each in their individual piles and I just sorted through. And so when I looked at a leaf and I could see what the shape was, I could then look up and see which leaf shape pile uh, I wanted. So now we've done the first layer. Um, now here is me using the, 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 what, what do we call that? Like the blueprint that we've already created for me to see where the rest of the florals need to go. I'm not going to show you, because <laughs> how boring would that be? I'm not going to show you me putting this entire background together, but this is the gist of it. Basically, I laid out my little map. Um, I looked to see how to line up my guide that we, we created with the vellum, and then I started gluing in all of my things. When that was done, I would then remove the vellum. I would set up my guide in its new area and then go through and glue down what I needed to glue down. Surprisingly, this was very quick. Um, because I think I had a guide to follow, it was basically just like add glue, stick it down, add glue, stick it down. Um, and so it did go very fast. I that does that really did surprise me because I was kind of set up in my head for like okay this is going to take a million years because I'm gluing all of these die cuts but it really it did not it it, it was a pleasant surprise <laughs> um so then some other things that I just kind of picked up as I was working my way through um I learned to like after I glued something to push it into the paper with my tweezers and then immediately kind of loosen up the vellum around it. Because what I found was, as I was saying previously, like your vellum is not infallible. So it can uh, rip if you're not careful with it. Mine did. Mine ripped down at the bottom where that really thin stem is. But fortunately, all of the things, this is, sorry, going back, this is the, the finished piece. So all of the, the pieces, parts, the whole background's colored. I love the color scheme, totally digging it. This is the second card that we're going to do. And this one's only going to use one floral. It's just going to use the floral without the cup. Um, and I do like this floral. I think it's really fun. So now I'm just going to get this lined up straight and then I am going to tape it into place so that I can then start building everything. And here you'll probably see this, the tip that I was just talking about. So as I'm gluing them, I, and you can see where it ripped, um, down there at the bottom. So as I am gluing them down, I am kind of wiggling the vellum up over it and making sure that the cardstock is pushed to the cardstock because how mine ripped was I did have a little bit of glue that kind of squeezed out and I didn't move it right away because I didn't see it. 
And then my vellum was stuck to my cardstock. Now, this is, again, another reason why I chose something that was not cardstock, because cardstock can rip away from itself, and then it would leave, like, little pieces, parts stuck to my card. The vellum is not going to do that. It's, you know, once you get it pulled up, it, there's nothing to shed and to leave on your card. There is no layers to it. I hope that makes sense. Um, but you could still see all of the areas like where the leaves should go. So I wasn't worried that that section kind of ripped out. I was still able to use it. I never cut another guide. So yeah, that's, this one's just, this one's just pretty simple. This is a really, really great technique for obviously getting more out of your dyes because they look completely different than the intended coffee cup, which is very cute and it makes a cute shaped card or you can use the coffee cup on its own on, on a, you know, card. Um, but this gives you a different way to use it to really stretch those supplies. And I am totally here for that. I love any way I can stretch my supplies and get different looks. This is also a really great way to get bright colors on dark cardstock. Um, there's a couple of different techniques for doing that because I do love a bit of drama, uh, not in my life, in my in my design only. Um, but this is like the colors really pop off of this navy. This is actually indigo cardstock from Spellbinders, and it's a really deep, rich navy, and I love it. Um, but then, you know, you have these light peaches and like, um, you know, this coral color, this sage green that kind of pops off the background. And then later on, you're going to see that in the detail work where we kind of bring everything together, the white really, really shines. And I just love, 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 love the way that they came out. So um, these did take like Here's why it took me so long to get this. This is the truth. It took me a long time to get this video together, and it wasn't the die cut's fault this time. Uh, it was because of this camera. Y'all, this camera is the bane of my existence right now. Because the problem is I need a new one, but I have to finish the ones that I have due before I can get a new one. Um, and so I was just this one and another project, which I'll, I may put up that video tomorrow on my own channel. Um, but I just needed to to knock them out so that I could be done and, and move on from this camera. So here with this third card, which is another option that you have is you can go free form. You could do whatever you want. You have all these florals, these leaves, these pieces, um, and you can just make your own design, which is what I did here. I knew I was using this large hello, so I just set it into the center so that I could build my design around it. And, um, you may be saying to yourself, well, Kelly, now we can't use the template that we created. And you're correct, we can't. But there's another way that we can put these together really fast and easy. Um, and it's, you'll you'll see when we get there. It's super quick, super easy. You've seen me do it before. Um, but now here, I'm just getting them all laid out. And I messed around with this quite a bit to see what I wanted to use, what I was going to be happy with. I did not, but you also could. Um with these extra pieces, you see how this flower kind of looks like leaves. Um, in this layout, I trimmed off the, um, see that flower in the top right, the peachy one? I trimmed off those two little bottom pieces and I used it as a leaf in the bottom here. Um, but then you could also use these ones, um, you could use that as a, you know, a base for a leaf and put flowers on top of it and then create a, your own cluster. That would look really, really cute as well. Um, but I like this idea better just, you know, to kind of create my own pattern and design. Um, but yeah, yeah, lots of things that you can do with this so that the money that you spend on that dye is not just going to give you a coffee cup. It's going to give you a lot of other stuff. And I would encourage you when you're looking at dyes to see what other uses you can get out of them. Before I commit to how I'm gluing it, I'm just going through with my tweezers and making sure everything is exactly how I want it, um, that everything is just all lined up, and then I'm going to remove that hello. This is the last card that I'm making, so I just kind of pushed everything up and out of the way. 
Um, because then I'll, like I said, I'll just put that in the, the carrier so that I have those extra pieces. But now we're going to use our press and seal. So we're going to use the hinge method to do this. You want to make sure your sticky side is down. And then I'm just going to lay it over top and I'm going to push it directly onto my die cuts. I'm also going to push it to my glass mat. I'm going to burnish it to my glass mat with my bone folder to make sure it's not going anywhere. And again, just double checking, pushing, rubbing, pressing onto these die cuts to make sure everything is going to be picked up. And then I will pick them up and fold them over. This will allow me to put glue. I did it like top and bottom, but you could, if you're, if you're a quick worker, you absolutely could do them all at one time. The uh, Precision Glue Press that I have is carried by Picket Fence Studios, and it made my process so much easier with all of these little tiny parts. Uh, so if you have not looked into that, I would highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, but anyway, so I was just trying to push through these videos so that I could move on with the camera, which I did purchase a new camera. It arrived yesterday. Um only because my <laughs> my wonderful supportive husband was like, what is everybody else using? And I was like, they're using like a real professional camera, like real professionals. And it's expensive. And he was like, okay, but this is your job now. So don't you think that you should maybe, instead of spending money here and there and going through all of these different cheaper video cameras um, where you're getting frustrated and things aren't working right, like you should just go ahead and invest in one that you know you'll have for years. And I was like, well, that sounds very logical, but I am cheap and it is a lot of money. <laughs> um, so eventually he did. And we we ran into the problem of my setup has not changed since I started my YouTube channel, what, seven, eight years ago, however long it's been now. My setup hasn't changed. My camera mount is made out of PVC pipe. My lighting is garage lights, like aluminum garage lights, um, because it was always just something that I did on the side. And I never upgraded because this worked for me. So I never felt the need to. Well, in order to get the new professional camera, I have to have a mount that will support the weight of my new professional camera. And then I have to worry about my lighting situation. Let's go back to the cards. So here, this is all three of them laid out. These are the ideas that I had for how to put them together. So I cut out, a, as you can see, a bunch of the hellos because I knew that I was going to stack them. This one on the left, I also cut out some of that peachy color. The one on the right, I cut out some of that mustard yellow. Um, what is it? I think it's actually Stardust by Concord and Ninth. And then I left the the one that has the busiest background just white. In addition, I cut out some pieces for a scalloped edge. The white scallop was very boring. And I didn't, I wanted to add texture, but I wanted it to match. So I'm actually going to use that piece because they're both cut with the same scallop. The piece that has all the die cuts in it, I'm going to use it as an embossing plate. So I ran it through my Platinum 6 with my embossing mat and all of that. And so it embossed the same shapes of flowers into this white background. Um, I hope that you can see it in the light. It's really very pretty and it all matches. And it was just enough to give the card some added texture. So it wasn't so boring. Um, because before I just had a lot of plain colors and it was very boring. This little tip for putting the letters together, I actually picked up from Jennifer McGuire in a um, video that she did recently. I normally glue, stack, glue, stack, glue, stack. In her video, she put glue on all of them, like all the back pieces, and then stacked them up all together. And then while the liquid glue was wet, she maneuvered them into place. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. There, it was so much easier and it went so much faster to do it this way. But I will tell you, it's only going to work with liquid glue because you need that downtime in between um, where it's not set yet to be able to slide them into position. But man, oh man, did that work great. 
So now for this card, I am going to use my hello, like the negative piece, instead of discarding it, because this is going to be how I'm going to line up that hello the same way for it to fit in between the design that I built around it. So I'm just going to go in and we're doing the same thing that we did with the florals, just the same inlay. Um, but then we're going to remove that outside piece so that everything lines up really nicely and straight and it works with the design that we built around it. So, um, anywho, back, back to the camera conversation. So it was like, I couldn't just replace the camera. I also had to replace the mount. And then, um, you know, I have to worry about my lighting situation. A lot of you know, people in this industry use a tripod lighting situation. I cannot use a tripod because I have an L-shaped desk, so I can put a tripod on one side but not the other, and then my light, you know, would be off. It wouldn't be even. Um, so, anywho, we did get the new camera. We did get the new mount. I will probably put those up this weekend, and then I'll, you know, I, learning curve, I'll have to learn how to use it. So, pray for me, because technology and me we're not, uh, we're not BFFs, you know, we're, we're frenemies. Like I need to be friends with them, but it always do me dirty kind of thing. So that is this card. This just has a slight white border for this one. This is again, I cut it out with the larger scallop. I am going to mount it on white. So just a little bit of white kind of peeks through on the edges since I did choose to use the largest scallop. Um, I just couldn't bear to cut through more of it than I had to, but it needed something. And then we're going to do the same thing. This hello is stacked the same way the first one was. Um, well, they're all stacked, quite honestly. Um, and then I chose to do the white because we have so much going on into the background. So I am just fitting those back in there, um, you know, just like we did with the other one. And, um, this one, honestly, this one might be my favorite just because I love that background. Like, it just reminds me of, like, that vintage kind of print style. Um, so for this one, this is the one that we did as a single. I did trim it down with a rectangle die, and then I actually mounted it with the green, um, and it's the same green that I am then mounting this embossed piece on just to, it needed something, it needed some contrast to make it more interesting. And uh, I didn't want to do the navy again. So that's why I chose the green. And then I matted the navy and the green as well. They are both dark. So on camera, it's probably hard to see that there's even a difference between the two. But um, in real life, you can see that there is a difference between the two. Otherwise, obviously, I wouldn't have picked that color for my leaves and all of those things if you couldn't have, you know, if you couldn't tell. So then this one, we cannot use the template for the hello because we need it to stretch across the whole bottom. So how we make that work is we're going to put the first letter and the last letter exactly where they need to be. And then we can move around the middle letters to get the proper spacing so that everything looks the way that it should look. Now, because I do have a couple of layers of cardstock underneath my hello and underneath the um, floral piece, I did have to fit in some very thin foam tape just so it would be even, just so you know that's how I made that work. For the detail piece and kind of to bring everything together, um, and of course to make them my own, uh, I'm going to go in with my white gel pen. This is going to tie in all of that white that you see repeating throughout the cards. And I just did a kind of soft kind of curved lines around some of the leaves, around some of the flowers. And then I also added some white dots. Uh, this is just going to fill up the space a little nicer to make it look like a fuller pattern. Um, and then also for the one that has like that mustard colored yellow, it's going to help it feel not like it has a top and bottom and a middle, like it, it's going to help it feel more connected by using these white lines. There is no right or wrong way to do it. You just do it until you're happy with 
what you have going on. So this is all three cards done from that coffee cup die that we started with. Three totally different looks. Really happy with the way that they came out. I hope it inspires you to try something similar. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.